this idea of using the language of advertising to talk about social issues, which became that branded project. Commerce and marketing and branding affects the way that we see ourselves, and especially the way that African Americans are imaged in, in mainstream media. And so I did this branded series, which is just all these images that look like ads that talk about aspects of African American history. Well, I think my personal stake is coming to every time when I use a picture that I didn't take and put it out as mine, because at any moment someone could say, that's stealing, or you didn't take that, or you're not creative. Um, so <laughs> that's always for me right there. Like, and I think there is this degree of reckon, trying to recognize, well, is there another way that I could make this point, tell the story, is this going to be interesting to just me or, or someone else? What am I going to say that's new? Can I say anything new? And then I say, that's a good question. You need to ask people <laughs> like about how they feel about the images and what they think about me using them in this context. Um, is this bad? Is this tacky? Is this nasty? Is this mean? Is this disrespectful? And then through those dialogues, I really gain my own point of view. And if I can find myself a, a strong argument for something being valuable outside of my own kind of whimsy or curiosity to either to appropriate it or to recontextualize it, then I feel like it's, um, it needs to be done. One of my first images from the branded series was an image called Absolute Power, where I took an image of how slaves were packed into the slave ship Brooks, and I co-opted it to make an absolute seeming ad. I look at logos as our generation's hieroglyphs because they are embedded with a meaning that you can take all across the world and still maintain that. And so I used the Michael Jordan Jumpman logo as this kind of really very uh, popular image or archetype of a black male in success. So How has he avoided lawsuits? Is terminology all it takes? By using words like co-opting or appropriating, has he gotten away with blatantly using all of these logos and ads from such large corporations without any trouble? Or could there be more to the story? Perhaps he buys the rights to all the images he uses. So I started to actually use real ads in the Unbranded series. But if he does buy the rights to some of the images, is he not playing into the very system he strives to critique? Or is it, as he suggests in one interview, possibly the fact that the company showed in his series, branded and unbranded for instance, don't want to draw attention to the fact that they created racist or race commodifying ads in the first place? Due to the nature of the critique, might even the largest organizations decide not to get into a public legal battle with him over his critique or commentary because they know he's right and they know they will lose something in the process of fighting him? Maybe not money, maybe not even the court case itself, but they understand they're bound to lose public respect or public loyalty by fighting him on this? Can the nature of the issue be so tricky or important that even the most powerful entities shy away from touching it? On a certain level, it's not as fun as when I was out taking pictures and like in the dark room and printing them and, and, and that process of being physically um, and temporally really engaged in every step of it. It's just times have changed. To make an image that is really, really, really important right now, when we have millions of pictures being taken as we speak, trying to make sense of the images we're creating right now. And part of it, you could say, is for me recognizing my failure to be like the most creative, ingenuitive photographer of this moment. Or you can see it as my realization that how important it is to look at what we're already putting out there and framing it and reframing it in a way that we can look at the world and our history and our present in a different way.